I'm not continuing the Redfield bloodline. Resident Evil 4 is one of the most memorable games in the series, especially since it was the first Resident Evil game with an over-the-shoulder camera style. About a month ago, Capcom released a VR mode for the Resident Evil 4 remake on the PSVR 2, and after completing a portion of the story, I've noticed a lot more details than one would see on flat screen. Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry, and today we're going to discuss what makes Resident Evil 4 Remake's VR mode unique and how to maximize your experience with it. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! To set the stage for Resident Evil 4, we delve into the narrative following Leon Kennedy, a government agent on a mission to rescue Ashley Graham, the president's daughter. Abducted by the Los Illuminados cult under the sinister leadership of Osmond Sadler, Ashley's fate hangs in the balance. As Leon ventures to save her, he confronts not only the malevolent cult, but also contends with Las Plagas infected residents, enigmatic figures, and a myriad of other daunting challenges. The game opens with two cops escorting Leon to the village, and after separating with them, the world suddenly envelops you in Leon's first-person perspective and offers you an immersive experience. The sense of scale and presence in VR drew me to this world, to the point three Three words involuntarily slipped from my lips. Get me out. After a quick self-pep talk to regain composure, I pressed on and what awaited me was a revelation. The game's environments unfolded in exquisite detail, from the intricacies of the architecture to the play of the light illuminating the windows and my hands. The darkness in certain locations became palpable, and even I found myself appreciating the festive decorations of the Ganados up close. The all-encompassing soundscape pulls you in every direction. Imagine this. As Leon, you're alone and hear the subtle scuttling of rats on the floor. There's a distant howl in the wind within the impending storm. <laughs> Inside a creaky door of a dilapidated cabin, unsettling noises play mind tricks on you. Footsteps, the menacing sounds of villagers brandishing their weapons. The heightened awareness from these atmospheric sounds make you constantly scan your surroundings. With every noise and rustle, I spoke too soon. While the remix cutscene switched to a third-person view, its captivating story makes it easier to overlook the slight disruption of immersion. However, there are tips to elevate your experience in VR for this game. In Chapter 1, you may notice a black border encircling the screen, which is the result of tunneling, designed to reduce motion sickness by creating a vignette effect. If the feeling of peering through toilet paper rolls doesn't sit well with you, turn off tunneling in your settings for a more expansive view. If you prefer Leon's movements to be seamless, fine-tune your experience by going into your settings and replacing that default snap with a smooth turn. Not only does the immersive scale elevate your experience in this VR mode, but the controls do as well. Using motion controllers, you can slash barrels with your pocket knife, hold a flashlight, and interact with items more naturally, as if you're really performing these actions. Whether it's pulling levers, disarming bear traps, or enhancing treasures with gems for added value, the intuitive controls make every action engaging. Speaking of treasures, the merchant in Resident Evil 4 is indeed Duke's friend. He inflates the prices just like him, but he does pay a pretty penny stranger, and he rewards you for his minigames at the shooting range. Come on, say it. Say, what are you buying, stranger? A decent size. But size ain't everything, am I right? In the VR mode of the remake, intuitive controls take on a whole level of realism, particularly when it comes to weapon handling. You're mimicking the actions of a skilled agent like Leon by aiming with your gun, ejecting magazines, and gesturing your hands in a way to imitate reloading a gun. The immersion is so intense that your fight-or-flight senses are triggered during the Ganados' warm welcome party. From screaming bloody murder, you will channel your inner John Wick, delivering precise headshots and even dual 
dual wielding pistols. You also have an option to tweak your settings to enable the red dot sight on your weapons for enhanced accuracy. And if your gun betrays you at the time of need, embrace your creativity. Flail a pocket knife to give your enemies impromptu haircuts. Perform finishers. Throw grenades with the swing of your arm. And use their traps against them. The options are limitless, offering you, as Leon, a creative edge to survival. In the midst of the action, your choices also matter somewhat. For instance, when facing infected dogs, using a knife may seem challenging, nudging you towards the old yellow path. You're also faced with a moral choice to spare a good dog from a bear trap. <coughs> Take care of yourself, buddy. During Chapter 5, you're faced with a challenge to head to an extraction point with Ashley and cut through familiar locations. A stealthy route is wiser considering you're not alone. Also, I think Ashley definitely leoned the wrong person. But if you do this in VR, it's definitely like Hitman Simulator. Teamwork also plays a crucial role. Defending a house with Louise, your first instinct may be to barricade the windows, but VR throws surprises at you. As I adjusted my headset, Louise was already swarmed, so we had to go rescue the princessa. Not this princessa, this princessa. Middle head! Parrying becomes an art form in VR as your pocket knife can pretty much parry any weapon, even a chainsaw. Fuck. If the combat is getting boring and stale for you, you can always add more flair to it by flipping your knife and gun in the air like a true Resident Evil gamer. While executing various combat strategies, Leon will also deliver lines and quips like the legendary Resident Evil Chad he is. Sorry, must have slipped. When you conquer the toughest foes, the VR experience allows you to express your victory the way you want to. Now for the important question. How can we use our favorite weapons when needed? Weapon management in the VR mode makes a tactile turn as you assign shortcuts to your weapons, strap them to parts of your body, and grabbing your arsenal from your front side like grenades, knives, pistols, and an ammo pack adding a layer of realism to the combat flow. Boss fights in VR are nothing short of a cinematic brilliance. The El Gigante fight was terrifying and thrilling in VR, especially when you utilize a mix of guns and knives to take down the colossal foe. As you seek refuge in the shed to reload your gun, you observe the troll's destructive power, tearing the shed apart from the inside. Help me! The dog you free also plays a crucial role as you watch it bait the creature into a dazed state. Who's a good boy? <laughs> Thanks, bud. The lake monster encounter was also exciting as you're taken on an intense boat ride in first person, attempting to defeat the creature by throwing harpoons at it. Resident Evil 4 Remake's VR mode amplifies the horror in the game, with jump scares, an eerie atmosphere, and relentless enemies seamlessly weaving together to craft a nightmarish, chilling experience. The need to constantly look over your shoulder becomes instinctive as violent villagers thwart your escape through cunning tactics, destroying bridges, hurling torches, launching axes, firing cross bolts, and climbing on ladders to trap you on upper floors. They also lurk in hiding spots waiting to pounce on you when you least expect it. Yet the true terror is when you're alone. You see a lantern swaying ominously in a storm, the haunting melody of clanking music, the menacing whir of a chainsaw, the agonizing screams of someone burnt at the stake, and the sound of a villager spotting you.
With Resident Evil 4 Remake's VR mode, you are not just seeing the terror, you're feeling it. In the VR mode, puzzles take on a new level of interactivity, making you physically engage with the game. In Chapter 4, I found myself physically turning cogs with hand motions to align the key image on the glass panes. The mission where we were looking for the stone heads also elevated the experience in VR, as it has you literally reaching out to press correct symbols on the stone. I do wish you could push open doors with your hands, bookshelves, and type on the typewriter like the OG game. But the interactive elements in the game compensate for it. So what are your thoughts on Resident Evil 4 Remake or its VR mode after watching this video? Let me know your opinions in the comments below. I do plan on finishing this game on the channel, but if this video gets at least 20 Leon approved likes, I will do a challenge of your choice for this game or live stream the rest of this game in VR wearing the headset. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. A small percentage of you that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So as it's the new year, I've decided to set an ambitious goal for us in reaching 3,000 subscribers within two months. If you want to be a part of making that happen, then hit subscribe. It's free. And you can always change your mind later. Or you can say, not a chance, bro, but I will find you. Thank you for watching, and that's all. <laughs>